Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's your Mondays, writing your church story. So we begin with our first, with our third episode. And to commence our program, may we invite you to our opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, You are glorified by the beauty of Your creation and the noble handiworks of humanity. Help us to contemplate Your beauty, both in nature and in works of art, so that we, moved by the light that shines from You, may be a light for our neighbor. May the labors of heritage advocates, cultural experts, and practitioners promote always what is good and beautiful. Bless all artists who create and express in your image, O God of creation, that their works may only reflect your truth. Preserve us from harm, restore our brokenness. Grant that we may conserve well our health, body, mind, and spirit, that our lives may become your enduring heritage to the world. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we would like to welcome you to this third episode of Writing Our Church Story. So today is the 28th of June. And it's a Monday, and we would like to acknowledge the support of our um, valuable uh, sponsors for this seminar workshop. So this is spearheaded by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, the Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, the Church Historians Association of the Philippines, and the University of Santa Tomas Graduate School, our Center for Conservation of Cultural Property and Environment in the Tropics, and the Archivo de la Universidad de Santo Tomas. Now, this webinar is uh, live streamed on the following Facebook pages. So we can be viewed on the CBCP News, also on the platform, of the USDGS CCC PET, definitely on the CBCP Episcopal Commission, for the cultural heritage of the church and the platform of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. Now, as we move forward to our program this afternoon, just some reminders again, for proper acknowledgement of our participants, please input in the chat box, your full name and institution. At the same time, do use the chat box if you have questions and queries regarding the topic of our speaker. Now, we would like you to uh, listen to the message of the chair of the CBCP, Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, and at the same time, our bishop in the Diocese of Dumaguete. May we all welcome Most Reverend Julito B. Cortes. On behalf of the Bishop members of the CBCP Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, I would like to welcome all participants and netizens to this seminar workshop on writing Your Church Story online edition. I am thankful to the Church Historians Association of the Philippines, or CHAP, for gently heeding the clamor of the bishops to organize this very significant event so auspiciously convened this year as we mark the fifth centenary anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the country. This has been long in coming, and we all must take this rare opportunity to review our past to make it today 
a guide for the future of Catholicism in our country. I extend my thanks to the UST Center for the Conservation of Cultural Property and Environment in the Tropics, or CCCPET, for hosting this church event. Their constancy to purpose guaranteed the launching of this online gathering. The considered study of history has been populated by both truth and falsity, reality and fantasy, the legendary and the mythical, claims and counterclaims. Historical revisionism to rectify historical errors on the basis of authentic primary sources contributes to the progress of the historical sciences. But historical revisionism to advance a personal agendum read through the lens of ulterior interest or undertaking to lionize a place or a person or an event harms the historical sciences and devalues the primary sources on which such activities are based. The study of church history, the an open mind. historian then is to be dutifully obedient to the supreme truth who is no other than the God incarnate himself for as Jesus claims I am the way the truth and the life from John verse 6 I invoke St. Joseph's powerful intercession to whom St. Francis dedicates this year so that he will continually take care of the church who in the words and support of the truth. From 1 Timothy chapter 3, Mary's. Once again, welcome to this seminar workshop on writing Your Church Story Online Edition. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Cortez, for that very inspiring message, a very timely reminder for all of us who are about to embark into writing our church story. Now, for our episode three, this will be a special case study on the Fray Juan de la Concepcion's arch archives, Archivo Recoleto. So just to walk you through uh, the abstract, the historical archives of the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno, reading history through primary sources. The Fray Juan de la Concepcion archives, also known as Archivo Recoleto, is the historical archives of the Augustinian Recollect province of St. Ezequiel Moreno. The Archivo has a collection of the available primary sources on Augustinian Recollect history in the Philippines. The Archivo Recoleto has two categories of primary sources, digital and hard copy. This webinar on the OER archives has the following objectives. First, firstly, it is an orientation to all interested researchers 
on how to gain access to the archives, and secondly, to promote awareness of the Archivo Recoleto's collection of primary sources on recollect history of all former missions in the Philippines, Japan, and Guam. And this episode, we have, of course, uh, our foremost speaker representing the uh, Archivo Recoleto. So we have with us Father Emilio Edgardo Equilatan, OAR, PhD. He is of the Order of Augustinian Recollects and holds a degree on church, in church history. Currently, he is a professor of church history in Recoleto School of Theology, the USD Central Seminary, San Carlos Graduate School of Theology in Makati, and in the Immaculate Conception Graduate School of Theology in Bulacan. Definitely, we would like to welcome the Archives Administrator of the Archivo Recoleto. Can you give a big round of applause to Father Emil? Father Emil, welcome and good afternoon. You may afternoon. share your slide, Father Emil. And so good afternoon to all and welcome to this, uh, to this webinar on the uh, Agustin Recoleto archives, not the Archivo Recoleto. I'd love to share with you some pointers here. Okay, now, since I am the first speaker with regard to this uh, archival research, no, allow me to share with you this afternoon this uh, archival research, research no, in Archivo Recoleto, no, or known as Fray Juan de la Concepcion Archives. No? Before anything else, allow me to clari clarify some terms that we're going to use. No? Archives. No? So let us be, there are too many kinds of archives. The archives that I'm referring to here, the Archivo Recoleto and all archives, not referring to religious institution, are classified as ecclesiastical archives. So what is an what are ecclesiastical archives? No, it may, according to definition, may be described as a collection of documents, records, monuments, and memorials memorials pertaining to the origin, foundation, growth, history, and rights, and privileges, and constitution of a diocese, parish, monastery, or religious community that is a religious congregation or order under the jurisdiction of the church. The term also applied to a place of depository or place or depository where such records of the religious institution, parish, or diocese, no, records and documents are kept. Now, these are historical records and documents. That's why the Archivo Recollect belongs to one category. It is an ecclesiastical archives. No? That's why, let us differentiate. Father, ang archives ba pareho sa library, accessible anytime. No? Well, they are different. That's why allow me to share you the difference with the differences between archives and libraries. No, first, archives you no know, keep inactive and unique records of permanent value. In other words, these are documents, close in quotation, that are already dead. They are kept inactive, but they contain historical information about the religious congregation or any institution. For libraries, no, the, they are keeping reading materials, books, no, uh, journals, no, that are still in current use, and that is not unique. No, it's, it, it has a general collection, while archives has particular collection because it pertains to the history of an institution. Second difference, the archives. And has a colle uh, have collections arranged as determined by the institution. While libraries, not you know the, the classification that follows either the Dewey Decimal System or the Library of Congress. Archives, not the users are more limited because it has a particular, no, we might say documents that we are being kept. No, these are private documents. Well, in libraries, greater number of variety of users has they have access in libraries. So one time I have not forgotten some years back, no, that the 
Philippine National Archives, ang pabansang sinupan ng Pilipinas, invited all um, ecclesiastical archivists. No? Only two attended. No? The archivist at that time was Father Jose Arcilla of the Jesuit Archives and I myself. No? And uh, pambansang sinupan ng Pilipinas would like to uh, gain access by asking copies, no? digital copies of our collections. And I told them, we cannot that give that to you because these are private collections. No? These are not for general public viewing. That's why the uses are more limited. Another difference no, for the archives, information found through consulting finding aids. That's why you have cat particular, peculiar catalogs pertaining to the archives. It's the content of the archives. While in the libraries, you have your cut card catalogs or self-browsing self or checking or the OPAC system for checking the available materials in the library. Next, no, in the archives, materials are consulted in a research or in a search room only for that particular purpose for particular researchers. While in the libraries, collections are available openly and they can be taken out, but in the archives, not all can be taken out. The objective of the archives, this is the protection of the intellectual and physical integrity, integrity of the institution. That's why it's a private archives. Well, in the libraries, the building is comprehensive, has a comprehensive collection for control and effective use for users. Now, the purpose of the visit in archives, not no proof of transaction, letter of recommendation, or letter of request, no? addressing the motive of the research and the topic of research. While well, libraries is more educational, recreational purposes. No? Then for the archives, no, the archives should be maintained by trained archivists. That's why you have to study archive and management, which I did in Rome. Okay. And part of our course is to study, no, we call it the course archivistica, which refers to archival management, but it's a European model that we, we, we were introduced to. While in the libraries, they should be they were maintained, they are maintained by professional, by a professional librarian or librarians. Now, archives are not museums. Now, why? What's the difference? Now, because museums, they keep objects or artifacts which associated which, uh, with associated documentation, which may or may not be unique. So one time, one of the, you know, one of the donors would like to donate some artifacts, images. Sabi ko, hindi po sa akin yung jurisdiction. You go to the Museo Recoleto Department. So museums, they are the repository of art historical artifacts, while archives, historical documents, referring to the in Inquisition, the in excuse me, institution, excuse me. The arrangement in the museum is not significant. It has the control of collection and is determined by the collector or institution. Museums, like the National Museum, has more access to the public no and the information found no are in the objects themselves described with a small description you know, about the artifact or artifacts no museums the materials are viewed in display galleries or exhibition areas and the objective of museums are uh, is the collection and protection of selected objects or objects or artifacts and the purpose of the visit, educational, aesthetic, or recreational reasons. No, you can go there and you are for, for, for viewing, no, you can enjoy it for as your pastime or to study. No, and they are the museums are maintained by trained museum curators. So with the difference, not the archives, we are not we are different from libraries and we are different from museums. But so what is the task? of an ecclesiastical archivist, which is different from any archivist of any secular institution. That's why Pope, the late Pope Paul VI, no, in an address to church archivists dated 26th of September 1963, defined a very important task of an ecclesiastic, of the ecclesiastical archivists. And I quote, no, it is Christ who operates in time and who writes. 
he himself his story through our papers which are which are echoes and traces of this passage of the church of the passage of the lord jesus that is transitus domini no thus having venerated veneration for christ having sense of the church it means giving to ourselves and those who will come after us the history of this of the passage of this phrase transitus, transitus domini in the world in other words we the archivists we preserve we conserve you know, for posterity these documents historical documents of the institution of the religious institution of our religious order or congregation that echoes the presence of Christ in the church. Transistus Domini. That's why they are, the, ecclesiastic, the ecclesiastical archives are very important because it is not only a secular, uh, this secular history, it, uh, it is an ecclesiastical history of a religious institution founded by the Lord Jesus himself. His presence echoes in the documents because we are, as a religious order, we are part of the body of Christ. That's why these are very important documentation judged to be preserved, conserved, and to be passed on to posterity. So this is our task as ecclesiastical archivists. Now let's proceed. No, that's the Friday one de la Concepcion archives or the Archivo Record. When did it begin? That's the question. And how do we, we might say, work on this, uh, work out on this, we might say, research field? No, primary sources on Recoleto Church, Recoleto history in the Philippines in particular. Okay. So the address of this Archivo Recoleto, referring to me, no, it is addressed to me, Reverend Father Emilio Edgardo Equilatan, the archive administrator. The address is Bulwagan Recoletos, number 81 Alondra Street, Miranila Homes, Congressional Avenue Extension. Glib-lib na lugar po to, you have to have your own vehicle no, to come into the subdivision, lalo na ka may mong pero tayong pandemic and uh, quarantine protocols to be observed. Uh, this is our telephone number. 028-951-2861 or 62. And this is the, the, the Archivo Recoleto email, Archivo Recoleto 1994 at gmail.com. Okay. So the archives contain the, the primary sources, digital and hard copy on the history of the Egusin Recollects in general and its history in the Philippines in particular. So our documents here, the primary sources, are divided into historical periods, not three, but four, rather. First, the Augustinian Recollect history from the beginning, from 1588 no, to the creation of the province of San Nicolas in 1621. The province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, referring to the Philippines, and later on it will expand to Spain and to Latin America from 1621 to 1946. The Vicariate of the Philippines, because uh, the, the, the decision to transfer the San Nicolas Provincial Curia, its seat, from Manila to Madrid was in 1946. That's why once it was transferred, the ho recollect houses in the Philippines, including later on China, Taiwan, and Guam, will be called La Vicaria de Filipinas. Um, and later, you know, the province of St. Ezequiel Moreno from 1998 to the present. Okay. Moreover, the Archivo has a collection uh, of printed materials dating back as 1700, including photos of, of religious and other churches as far as the late 1860s. Okay. So the Archivo Recoleto has its origin in our former church in Intramuros, no? where the present Manila Bulletin is standing was the church and no monastery or convent the way we use the word convent residence of religious of san nicolas de Tolentino friary and as a provincial curia at that time it has a library and archives so unfortunately according to professor luigi romanillos in 1945 during the liberation of manila no our the rest of the except san agustin of course 
the churches no, were destroyed during the liberation, including our precious archives. The few remaining were sent to the provincial archives in Spain for safekeeping, and the Catholico of the Filipiniana no, would not have been possible if there was no archival manuscript because many were, were copied by hand and photocopied and they were sent to Spain. Now remember, in we might say in the in the in a, there is a we may say a provincial we may say uh, ordinance that all documents that are produced you no know, in our art in the philippine in the recollect archives you no know, in and even in the provincial curia copies at least three should be sent one in should remain in the institution the parish or community one for the provincial curia in manila and one for the, what uh, what we say the historical archives in our monastery in Marsilla, Navarra, Spain. So fortunately, many of these, some of some of these documents were saved no, after World War II. And we were able to salvage of what was left of the of, of the documents that we have. And they were transferred to the following, no, Marsilla, Navarra. Thanks to we have copies and they were digital, digitalized in 1994, which we're going to discuss later. And many of these documents you know, were saved in, a, in the vicarial seat of the La Vicaria de Filipinas, in the vicarial seat first that was in San Sebastian from 1946 to 1969. And it was transferred in the 1970s in our OR Vicariate House, Vicariate seat in Quezon City. Okay. It was only on in 1994, that was February, that the Bulwagan Recoleto complex was inaugurated. Now, the Bulwagan Recoleto is a building containing the library, the museum, and the archives. And not only that, in the, on, in the ground floor, we have function rooms and uh, we may say audiovisual, uh, audiovisual hall and our Conservation, restoration, and convert conservation laboratory. Okay, so this was transferred. Now this is the picture of our archivo record, the research area in my office. No, it's recorded in the mezzanine of the building, and this is our repository or depository of recoleto. These are hard copies. No, we have plans and maps, and at the back you see a brown uh, cabinet that that contains the CD-ROM, we might say, uh, this of all the scanned documents of, of our archival documents in Marsilla, Navarra, Spain. Okay, this is also our uh, the, some pictures of our restoration and conservation conservation laboratory located on in uh, located in the in the ground floor of uh, of the Bulwagan Recoletos. No, we also we do not all we do we not all, we do not only restore printed materials and paper, but also paintings and other historical artifacts. So one of the unique, one of the pioneering efforts of our vicariate at that time before we became a province was that digitalization of the archives in Marsilla, Spain. That's why between 1994 and 1998, the OAR Philippine Vicariate in collaboration with the mother province of San Nicolas de Tolentino, began the project of digitalizing the oil archives in the Agustinian Recollect Monastery in Marsilla, Spain, Navarra, Spain. We have hundreds of discs that was uh, uh, that was uh, that contain these scanned documents. And the, the one the, the, those who were sent there were Filipino recollects who studied computer and photography. So they were well prepared. You no, know? up to now our cd on these are still in good shape and they could be used by any um, uh, recent uh, mac and pc computers okay then the catalog the catalog of this digital archive may i inform you can be found in our website the recoleto school of theology website no now check the bar above look for programs and once you click the programs scroll down you will look look for history culture and heritage recoletos once you click it will lead you to the documents of this section history culture and heritage look for their document Juan de la Concepcion Archivo Recoleto and there you will find 
the Guia del Archivo Provincial. It can be downloaded. So you could check what are the documents you need about the record the history of your town, your parish, or, or any institution that was, or we might say, parish or mission for me that were held before by the Agustinian Recollects. I will not discuss that. So this is the website where you could download the Guia no, del Archivo Provincial. No, these are scanned documents from our historical archives in Marsilla, Navarra, Spain. Try it no, after this one. Then you can communicate with me. If you have difficulty, I can, I can send you a PDF copy of our uh, digital uh, archives catalog. Okay. So our collections in print, I will just show you what we have. Some, only some, not all. First, we have the 14th volume of the Juan de la Concepcion, Historia General de Filipinas. No? And this is a very important, we might say, collection. It talks about the history of the Philippines from the time of this, this uh, arrival of Magellan up to its time after 1768. Okay, And what is interesting, no? since many of the writers at that time in the Spanish period no uh, who, who who based their uh, uh, who, who wrote their history of the first Easter Sunday mass that was said in Butuan this historian Recoleto historian was opposed the idea it was in Butuan it was in Limasawa which is indicated in one of the volumes of this book it's very interesting and but you have you either have to learn old Spanish to to read and decipher the message. Next, we have also the Embro Embrologia Sagrada by Fray Gregorio Sanz, no, printed in the 1820s, no? a guide for the midwives no? for delivering babies no? in remote barrios and emergency baptism to be performed if the baby is in danger of death. No? Okay, we have grammar, grammar books and other important works of uh, we might say Philippine languages, no uh, dictionaries or vocabularios, no, and one of them is the Ensayo Gramatica Hispano Tagala by pa Fray Toribio Minguella y Arnedo. No, he's a Tagalista. He spoke Tagalog and he composed a grammar guide for Spaniards who would learn to learn Tagalog. Not only that, we have Cebuano, Hiligaynon, etc. No, so this is, these are only samples of what. Print uh, collections, print collections we have in the archives. Then for history, you know, it was a first printed uh, printed uh, collection of summary of the history of the Agustin Recollects, you know, in general and in particular in the Philippines. In printed in two volumes in 1925 by Fray Licinio Ruiz, Synopsis Historica de la Provincia de San Nicolas de Tolentino, and he used the pro as primary sources which is transcribed you know, in the book they are found in this synopsis you know? so primary sources were transcribed in this book and they were printed in 1925 in the usd press in 1925 so it's very important that we have this volume in order to know your history you no know? because but they were taken from the former you no know, archives in intramuros then what is important about the history of the recollect missions and communities in the Philippines from 1909 to the present, no? it was the Bulletin de la Provincia de San Nicolas de Tolentino, no? which, uh, uh, which, was, uh, which was begun in 1909. No? It, it talks about reports, official documents coming from Rome, and, and one of the sections of this bulletin are the scientific cultural section. It talks about history and other documents that were transcribed from manuscript to print form in this doc, in this bulletin. And they were already annotated by Recoleto historians. And they, these are important sources, some of the, uh, one of the important sources in you know, studying Recollect history in the Philippines. They are still away. And we have a general index here from 1909 to 1999. So how do you request for access? No, prepare a scanned letter addressed to the archive administrator, yours truly. 
And this letter should be signed by the researcher and the letter should indicate the purpose or motive of the research and the topic. No? Kasi ang tanong ko, ano bang topic ng, ng research ninyo? Kung isang bayan in Bataan, be careful, Bataan is divided into two mission areas on the, uh, on the south for the Dominicans, on the north for the Recoletos. So be, be specific. No? And send this to the at chiborecoleto1994 at gmail.com or to my personal email address, ibilokilatan7781 at gmail.com or you could call no, through, all the, through this telephone number, 8951-2861 or 62 for an appointment. Because remember, uh, I'm the only archivist there working and I was given recently by an assistant. I have to train him. And I'm busy because I'm also teaching in three seminaries, not in this webinar. That's why you have to make an appointment. I have to check my availability. That's why the accessibility is very, very limited. So requirements for researchers, no? bring a valid ID, bring the original letter of request that you sent via email, and the researchers should know Spanish. And most of all, you should know how to read Spanish manuscripts and how to decipher the shorthand writings of this manuscript these are the basic requirements whenever you would do some research no during the spanish period you should learn your spanish basically so this is an example now this is a 17th century dated 1635 no it is the letter no of the bishop of cebu no Pedro de Arce, dated 1635, requesting the Recoletos to take over the Romblon Islands. No? This is a typical 17th century Spanish document. Then other documents, the old Spanish manuscripts, no? they differ no? in style per century. You should be aware of that no? and should know how to decipher. No? Another treasure trove that we have here in the Archivo Recoleto are the architectural plans of San Sebastian Basilica by engineer Genaro Palacios. He was the one who designed the old steel church of San Sebastian, no? and he was the one who supervised the, we might say, prefabrication of the parts of the church in Levanche, Belgium, and they were transported here to the Philippines. Its assembly was supervised by him. No? That's why it is, a, it is a very important fact that Gustav Eiffel did not design the Basilica of San Sebastian. No? Correction po, that's an urban legend. Gustav Eiffel, the one who constructed the Eiffel Tower in Paris, said that he was the one who designed it. Wrong po, si Genaro Palacios po ang designer and supervisor of the uh, prefabrication and assembly of this church, all steel church in Manila, no? and it was, which was inaugurated in August of 1891. So we have a complete documentation of the all steel church, no? Basilica of San Sebastian. So with this, no? the researchers should be aware of the requirements needed in order for us to be able to assist you in your research. What is important that this research no, should use primary sources and you don't just go to the libraries. Most of the time, libraries can only provide you secondary sources. But here, if you want Recoleto history using primary sources, just contact me and we will make an appointment so that you could discover the rich primary sources that the Archivo Recoleto contain. So thank you. And now I'm uh, going to entertain questions and answers from your chat boxes. So I, I would rather to spend this time to enrich the, the, my, my webinar. No? I'm just giving you a, a, only a hint of what is supposed to be an archival research in Archivo Recoleto. Thank you very much, Father Emil. Wow. So oh, I think everybody should have a chance to see I've heard so many things about this uh, breathtaking collection of the Recoletos. <laughs> I think everybody should have a chance to see your space and your archives. 
um, yes, we know it's very, very uh, limited no, in terms of access because um, well, not everybody could really have that uh, faculty of the Spanish language, but it's always a good reminder no, if you'd really like to have a meaningful research in your archives. Father, one question here, also yeah. from Father Elmer Sumile. No, most of our uh, onlineers are actually many here are your students. No? Oh, so yes. one of them, now I don't know, kung okay, ito, but. Uh, I'm open. Basta prangka ka, prangka din ako. Wala problema yun sa akin. <laughs> Oo. Wala akong wala kasi asking, uh, if they can get a guideline or a process uh, maybe the template of how to put together an archives. No? So, ah, guidelines. Because okay. I think mm -hmm. many of our onlineers are um, thinking of of course, no, coming up with their own local archives also. No? Okay. Uh -uh. Maybe some thoughts uh, from your father. Yeah. May I speak? No, uh, I was a member before when it was begun, the Association of Ecclesiastical Archivists in the Philippines. No? And I was one of the speakers and that was held in uh, Calaruega, no? in, in Batangas. No? I, I think Batangas, Calaruega. No? And uh, I participated in that set, how to organize the archive, the template, no? So what is important is the place, no? And the place should be conducive for the documents. That's why it should be air-conditioned and you have to keep a, the humidifier to control the humidity of the store where the documents are, in, are kept. No? Now, uh, I will because I was I'm just just discussing the uh, one the conception archives no it, it will consume no so it has must have a space a bigger space hati yan sa dalawa the research area and the of and where the researcher and the office of the archivist no where he could classify the documents are located and the storeroom that depository only the archivist could enter no. So these are the two basic parts of an are of the archives, the research area with the office and the depository. And the depository should be controlled its temperature and humidity, because the temperature and humidity will either no high temperature and high humidity can destroy a document. Okay, and if the documents are very old, to to safeguard it from insects. Because we are we are in the tropics, it should be first fumigated, no? and the techniques of fumigation. I'm not discussing this is quite long. No, every archive should have a fumigation chamber. In our laboratory, we have our fumigation chamber because any old book dating back as uh, 1800s and with holes, no, it's dangerous. They are because they are insects, no, hidden in the pages. They have to be fumigated before being stored in the depository. No? Uh, you know my uh, email address. No? You email me and I'll give you the template. No? I'll give you the template. No? These are basic. It's quite long, but the basic guide, I will summarize it for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Father, thank you very much. So at least the basis are there. No? The moment you receive your documents, alam nyo na, no? the spaces required. Uh, from... From Father Tony, uh, which provinces and regions and cities would benefit from doing research in the Archivo Recoleto? Okay, in the Guia del Archivo, no, many of the places we were. In the north, we were in Vigan. Mm -hmm. Remember the, 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 no, the, the Episcopal Palace and the Cathedral of Vigan was constructed during the time of the first Recoleto Bishop, no, Juan Ruiz de San Agustin. In the 17, 1770 to 1780, no? 10 years he was Bishop of Nueva Segovia. Then in the 1880s, the second Bishop, Mar Mariano Cuartero del Pilar. No? Mm -hmm. Then Sambales and Western Pangasinan. Pampanga is Mabalakat, and in Tarlac we have uh, Capas, Moriones, and, uh, and uh, O'Donnell. No? Now in, in Manila, we were also we were able to administer the, the guia, 
the sanctuary of the Western Union of the Guia, Antipolo. No? We have also uh, Mindoro, Palawan, no? Romblon, Marinduque. No? And the, in the Visayas, we have no, uh, Mambusao and uh, Mambusao and Batan, no? which is now part of Capiz and Antique. No? And Negros, the whole island of Negros, and almost uh, um, northeastern part of Mindanao. Then in 1768, when the Jesuits, we will took over the whole of Mindanao until our until an order to give back the Jesuit uh, parishes to them in 18, 1861, uh, 1859 and 1861. So almost or we were almost everywhere in the Philippines. No? And the Guia del Archivo will give you the indicate because the the the, you know, the documents are classified geographically. Mm-hmm. So it will not be difficult for you to pinpoint no, the, the place where the Recoletos were, were, uh, were, uh, were doing missions at that time during the Spanish period. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Father. Wow, quite valuable there. No, for some of you who don't know exactly uh, <laughs> kung sino ang nandyan, no, na religious order. Now, sinabi na ni Father kung na kung nandiyan ang Recoleto, so wala. Now, from Surigao del Sur, Father, wow, this is quite interesting. Thank you for sharing. Our parish po of Cantilan, Surigao del Sur, was established by Recoleto missionaries in yeah. the 17th century. Recoleto sources like the Synopsis Historica attests to the establishment of the parish in 1622. However, modern texts like the CBCP directory put 1791 as the foundation year instead. In doing historical research, how reliable or accurate po are the old Recoleto texts or sources? This is very important to us because next year would be the 400th year of the evangelization of the parish, if ever the 1622 is accurate. So thank you, Paul, Father. So okay. how would you, uh, uh, as far as I know, no, there will be conflicting, you know, conflicting uh, accounts. No, but I favor on 1622 because we arrived in 1622 in the northeastern part of Mindanao via Siargao. Mm-hmm. So between 1622 and 16, there were eight recollect missionaries assigned for the evangelization of the whole eastern part of Mindanao. Mm-hmm. You know, we entered Andad, and from Dandak we. Uh, the eight Recoletos spread throughout the northeastern part in 1622 and 1623. That's why I am more sure that your parish was founded in 1622. As a mission, as a mission was founded in 1622. I doubt if the CBCP would date it in 1791, maybe as a parish. But as a mission, it began in 1622. No? You email me and I will give you as uh, an accurate data on, on, on the date itself because we have uh, I have already studied the dates because we are preparing the centennial celebration of all the recollect hmm. missions in Mindanao starting in 1622 and in Palawan, the arrival of the recollects in 1623. I'm preparing a list. Hmm. I will send you those lists. Okay. Wow, lucky for you. <laughs> Personalized. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you, Father. Now, uh, more more questions coming in. Sabay sabay po ito. Hindi kita na ako titingin. Oh, oh. Uh, tanong mo na, Father. Is Nueva Ecija under the Recoletos or under OSA during the Spanish, uh, during the Spanish times? Nueva Ecija was under the OSA, Order of Saint Augustine, no? Okay. Kami po, wala, wala kami po sa Anastas Nueva, Nueva Ecija. That's the OSA territory. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we'll move here uh, from John Aguila. Hi, thank you for all the very good insights, Father. Uh, for more recent parishes, especially in our local parish, which was established in 1975 by the Passionists, what are some of the best practices to retrieve and preserve copies of decrees or are establishing our in establishing our parish and other architectural plans? Okay. While we do have pictures and some records, some have been lost. Otherwise, uh, we're not turned over. Would digitizing our current assets 
or documents be a viable practice as well? Would okay. you advise digitization, Father? I advise you collect first. Mm -hmm. The collection should be kept well. And once they are collected, you have to digitize, digitize them, scan them mm -hmm. for researchers' use. The original should be kept under strict lock and key you know, mm -hmm. for safekeeping. Because the originals are, are, are very important. You know. So for a parish up to the founded in 1975, by the if it is in Metroman, you can get them in Arca. You, know. you have a photocopy and can photocopy there. Have it kept, and you can scan them, you no, know, and keep them in your, in 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 your USB or your external drive, you no, know, by the archivist. So this could be accessed by researchers. Mm -hmm. you no, know. another thing is about the oral tradition of the parish. You no, know. are the pioneer where the are the pioneers who who help the foundation of the first five years of the are still alive. Interview them. Video interview is also what we call archival documents. No? Ito maginagawa, video interview are also important. We could, we, for example, no, when the, in, in Las Piñas, they were celebrated the 75th anniversary of the foundation of the Legion of Mary. No? And one of the earlier founders was my aunt, the elder sister of mm. my The only four of them were alive. No? And they were interviewed of how the Legion of Mary uh, was founded in Las Piñas and they how they thrived at that time. So it's also audio-visual, we might say, interview. Mm -hmm. Then aside from that, yung inyong souvenir programs. Importante yan. And another thing that you have to is the chronicle. Do you have a chronicler in your parish where events are recorded? And most of all, for the PPC, the minutes of the meeting. Do you have the minutes of the meeting of the PPC? So you can classify that document according to the needs of your parish. So that's why the classification is flexible mm -hmm. because it reflects the history of the institution. So these are the ways you know, how to classify documents. I will give you guidelines if you want to. No? Okay, that will be for now. Okay. Thank you, Father. Now, there's another question here. I think most of your uh, queries relate to how to put up itong archives nila, Father. Now, how do we distinguish, Father, what documents to put in an archive? Do we include all retrievable letters, documents, etc.? If we are starting our own archive in our parish, should we also include digital materials? Um, yes, so yeah. you know, uh, we, have, we have to criteria to follow. No? Letters. There are three kinds of how to classify letters. First, official. Mm -hmm. Second, communicate, just communications, no? instructions coming from the parish priest of the local beach, etc., or um, uh, meeting, uh, call for a meeting. And number three, personal letters. No? Personal letters that are to be kept separately from the uh, institutional communique and the official communications coming from the diocese or religious superiors. So these are the three ways to classify letters. Mm -hmm. no? According to person, the one who, who wrote it, and today, what person addressed to it. So, ang mahalaga, sino ang nagpadala? Yan ang inyong importanteng classification. Sino nagpadala? That's why... It can be an, according to the names of the sender of the letter. Okay, so marami yan, no? no? There are guidelines for classification. No? I will uh, I have I have guide. It's a three-page guide on how to classify your archival <laughs> materials, and I will send it to you via email. No, so hindi mo na ngayon kasi nga kulang oras natin. No? send me your email address. You write me, Father, and so and so. I need this guidance. I will send it to you gladly. I have them because I was. I said before I was a member of the ecclesiastical archivist of the Philippines. No? So uh, I'm applying these guidelines in the organization of the Archivo Recoleto. Uh -uh. That's all for now. Okay. Uh -uh. Thank you. Now this is also related to that question. No, kung uh, kasama ba yung letters? Uh, may rundin po ba sa archives nyo mga letters or articles na may kaugnay? 
bagian sa letos tungo sa iba pang pa pong classification yes, pattern. Pa, we call it uh, communication mm -hmm. from the different religious orders and from the bishops. Mm -hmm. no? We call it, uh, in Spanish, it's called provincialato. These are divided into categories from the general of the order, from the provincials, vicars, mm -hmm. and from the different religious orders and bishops, local bishops of that time. No? Mm -hmm. So, important yan because Manoman is an island. You are de dependent on other uh, religious <laughs> orders. You could who could assist you, no? For example, the Franciscan, SOS sila, 1659. They are asking to take over what is now Baler, ah, Aurora. Okay. Uh -huh. yun, ano, ano, SOS, kasi isang gal yun, lumubog, napat, na, na, nalunod, yung, nalunod yung mga missionaries na supposed to be coming, Franciscans coming to the Philippines. And they sent SOS to our provincial and they, in the 1650s asking to take over for the yes. meantime their missions in the Aurora province or Quirino province, no? Aurora province and Infanta. We were there for 30 years. <laughs> now we have also communication from the Agustinians. No? In Cebu, since we were poor, they decided to give us a parish in northern part of, uh, uh, of Cebu. So from that time, we were able to take care of 10 parishes in Cebu. So... Mm. These communications are very important because of how other religious orders helped us. No? When we arrived in 1606, we had no mission. So in 1607, the Dominicans gave their missions of what is now Maribeles, Sambales, and Western Pagasian to the Recoletos. Mm -hmm. So these are very important, we might say, communications that would be part of the history of the order. So these are, we may say, historical communications that are to be kept and preserved. Okay, So your connections with other congregations are also important because they are also your link with the church in general. Kaya nga, transitus domini. The Lord is there. Dumaan ng Panginoon, anong ginawa mo? Pinansin mo ba? Hmm. <laughs> okay. This is more on the operations, I think, of the archives, no? Um, Father, thank you for sharing uh, all of this information on, on the archives. You mentioned about museum and laboratory. May I respectfully know if you have a curator and conservationist and how do you work together, no? Uh, okay. Because the setup are, are these warm bodies present. No, in the in the setup. Okay, uh, since we are a religious province of San Ezequiel Moreno, we have secretariat, and we are under the secretariat of uh, his uh, of spirituality and culture cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. So we were we are under the secretariat, and under that we have uh, a head, and under us under that head are offices. I'm the, I'm the archive administrator, and one is a museum curator, another priest, and a li father librarian. And all employees are responsible to the head of that, uh, of that, uh, of that secretariat, you know, including its uh, operation and the breakdown of what we call expenses. So we have to submit budgets, yearly budgets. You know? So that's the way we operate. We work under a secretariat. You know? That's why all employees here, including uh, lab, lab, two, we have two laboratory technicians for librarians, mm -hmm. and uh, in, including of those who were trained in cleaning, maintaining museums, they form part of this, we might say, uh, body under the Secretariat of uh, Spirituality and Cultural Heritage. And we have guidelines on that. No? We have a handbook on administration in order for us to know our parameters. Mm -hmm. And the way we should manage the complex, the Bulwagan Recoleto complex. Mm -hmm. okay. So, organization lang naman yun eh. Kasi mm -hmm. kung wala organization, the sustainability of your museum, library, or archives, the ability is in question here. Because if you lack this body, no, priests come and go, the latest stay. 
<laughs> Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Priest, religious come and go. We are NPAs, no permanent address. Okay. We have limited <laughs> ano. We have limited ano. This lady are staying there, continuing her work. Uh-uh. And you have to leave guidelines. No? And budget. No? Wag puro volunteer. Volunteer. Naku, luma na yung volunteers na yan. Luma may kasi, Father, our friendship is good, but we need cash. <laughs> Pero ang kailangan dito, sweldo, allowance lang mm. man. Mm. Walang gratis-gratis ngayon. Lahat, ang daming gastos. Including the maintenance itself, kur- pahit sa kuryente. Saka kung anong pera, maglibos ka. Mm. So budget should be, there should be budget. And this budget is approved by the body and this will be continuously given to the to the to the archives, to the museum. Kasi may budget na yan eh. Kaya hindi mo pwede tanggalin yan. So it's more on organization to maintain sustainability. If you have no organization, sustainability of this institution would be no uh, questionable. Delikado. Masisira lang yan. Sayang ang pinagharapan. That's all for now. Uh-uh. Thank you for that, Father. I think that's a very important input. No? At ako akala nila kasi come and go, madali lang mag-put up ng archives. Ano yan? Bodega <laughs> lang? Excuse me, hindi yan bodega, no? <laughs> oh, ang hirap nga eh. Bodega ang, one, ang facilities. But one thing that I would like to highlight here is the fact na may, may manual of operations. No? There is a system Yes, we no, have manual that, of operation. Uh, oh, meron yan. No, it's professionally run and that's why you also see that it's it's orderly. You know, there is really a set of protocol that you have to follow to engage in these kinds of facilities. So, maganda yung point na yan, Father. Now, uh, another one here from Zamwanga, the Father. This is from Buenas Father tardes. Elmer. Buenas uh, tardes. Uh, Sumile. No, I am assigned to the Archdiocesan School here in Zamboanga. How can the school contribute to archiving of church documents and artifacts? Siguro tinatanong nyo, ano dapat ang kolektahin pa there? As a school, no. as a uh-huh. school, no. are you under a parish? Yan. Yeah. Yeah. Under a parish. Kung under kayo sa parish, yung communications ninyo, these this are the start. What are the communication? And how did your school start? That's the important question that you have to ask. The history of the of the school of of Samuanga. No, is it a it is is it a Catholic school, a non sectarian school? What kind of school are you a Catholic? If it is a Catholic school, no, under a parish, no, it should start with the parish and with the bishop mm-hmm. who approve for the creation of the school. So that's the thing that you have to define, no of the origin of your school. That's the time you could define the collection of your archives. No? It's history and, and as a school when you be, when it began, including you have to have an alumni section mm. no? in that archives. No? Your annuals, your souvenir program, the blessing of a building. Mm-hmm. In my case, I initiated the collection of all no, invitations. Uh, of the province and of the order, no? And I place them in a clear file because the clear file plastic, seagull, free, acid-free. Oh, Kaya okay. I don't mm-hmm. use album. Yung album na very brittle. Kapag brittle ang plastic, that is acidic. It destroys the picture or the invitation. I use the clear file na bibili sa National Bookstore or any bookstore, clear file, seagull, etc., peacock. Place them there and you could <laughs> add them. Lagyan nyo dyan, hmm. yung, in, yung inyong, ano, inyong mga invitations, yung inyong mga inaugurations. Yan. Importante yan because it's part of your history. You could retrieve the data when this building hmm. was inaugurated. Who was the one who blessed it? No? These are basic, yeah. we hmm. might say, historical documents which we take for granted. Another thing that I initiated in the collection, mga estampita. Estampita ng first profession. Estampita ng solemn profession. Estampita ng diacolor ordination. Estampita ng priestly ordination. No? To record, ay, itong parin to, he was ordained by this, by this bishop, etc. I have this collection from the 1950s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, org- I organized. Kaya kapag hanapin, ay, itong uh, parin to, yung, yung data mali yan, ito ang kanyang estampita. Ito, ito, yan. <laughs> <laughs> Pero counter, counter-checking ba ng dates? Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Thank you, Father. 
Now, this one, I think, is an enthusiast who would like to, to visit your archives. Um, Brian Ferrer from the Diocese of Imos. Father Emil, I only know very little Spanish, but I want to do research in the Archivo. By chance, do archivists extend assistance to researchers in at least comprehending, not translating word for word the contents of the archival documents? So thank you. Ako, ito, yung mga, I think, one. Those who Spanish. have limited knowledge of Spanish, no, I'll give you the guia and I will translate the content of the guia. No? Anong nilalaman nito? Give you the mm -hmm. idea. Ang kailangan mo ba ito? I will not give you the whole translation of the madudoling ka. No? Madudoling ka. So, ang gagawin ko na lang, oh, ito ang nilalaman nito. This okay. is the date. Will you take it? We can print it out. No, We don't give soft copies. We only give hard copies. No, mm -hmm. yan. We only give, we print out hard copies, digital copies of the, mm -hmm. of the uh, scan documents. So, I can give that. Uh, may taga-imus nga nagagusto. Huwag na muna ngayon. Very busy ako. Uh, I'm available late, later of July pa kasi nga I have to submit so many uh, grades for, oh. for the school po. Ang daming mga requirements. Okay? Nasses. I'm not yeah. entertaining research for the month of June because of the academic demands that I had to submit to the mm -hmm. seminaries. That, as of now, I, I know that guy from Imus hold na muna. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm willing to assist yung basic translation of the, about the contents of the documents. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, Buenas, Father Emil. Buenas uh, también. Uh, 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 Louis here is a Christian of Monsignor Mojica from Cavite City. Wow. There were eight churches before inside Cavite Puerto. Mm -hmm. What church was under the Recoletos? Was it the Santa Monica? Who yes, still Monica. exists today to correct historical record. Gracias. Mm -mm. Santa yes, Monica, the, Father? Yeah, the Santa Monica Church, uh, only the Belpre is standing. Surrounded mm -hmm. by informal settlers. Mm -hmm. And there are some structures of the convent. Now, we have the plan of the Santa Monica. Actually, it was called San, San, San Nicolas Church of Cavite Puerto. Mm -hmm. When in 1898, now in the 1900s, we leased it to the Agustin Recollect Sisters mm -hmm. and they opened Coleo de Santa Monica, a school for girls in Cavite Puerto, which is now PM, Philippine Navy. And <laughs> it, it, from that time, it was called Santa Monica. Actually, uh -huh. not, it is San Nicolas, founded in 1616. Yes. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have the historical data, including the renovations made for the church in the uh, 1800s, after the 1863 mm -hmm. earthquake. Uh, so we have the plan. So completo kami dyan. Okay? Okay. You know, one of the, uh, uh, the uh, non-existing church, the eight churches of Cavite Puerto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Father, from Clement. Clemens Victor Castro, Father, we are preparing for the tricentenary of our parish here in Nueva Segovia. Is there a similar list or study that you have about our archdiocese, like what you are preparing for the Mindanao mission? We know that the Recoletos founded our parish because our bells here have the old symbols of the order. Wow. No? That is vegan and Nueva Segovia. Oh, vegan. vegan. This is vegan. Vegan. Ah. I mentioned it before that the, the present cathedral, mm -hmm. the Episcopal Papalis and the Plaza was designed and uh, with through the through the recollect bishop of, of uh, Nueva Segovia, vegan, no? Juan Ruiz de San Agustin. And mm -hmm. there's there was a thesis written by a recollect to seminary about. Bishop Juan Ruiz de San, Sa, Ruiz de San Agustin, the Recoleto okay. Bishop of Bhutan. Okay. Available po yan. If you want to add, we will send you a, a photocopy. Wow! Okay. Ang swerte naman ito. No? So, uh, last question. Before we wrap up, Father, no, I think Father has shared some very valuable insights and some very valuable guides no, for all of you who would like to embark on historical research in his archives and also how to put up some archives. Now, ito is, uh, yes, Las Piñas ito, from Charles Boris Banyas. Actually, he is our student, no, sa UST. Thank you, Father, for the presentation. I'm doing research about St. Joseph's Church, Las Piñas. And curious, if Father Diego Serra, December 1795, and Father Ezequiel Moreno, July 1876, had crossed paths 
during the construction and rehabilitation of the church. I'm still in the process of learning the Spanish language. So, nag-abot ba, nag daupang palad ba si Father Diego Sierra and St. Ezequiel Moreno? Hindi ko siya na nagkaabot. Diego mm-hmm. Sierra died in 1834, I think. 18 na, 1834. St. Ezequiel arrived in 1870 in the mm-hmm. Philippines. Mm-hmm. No? However, we have reports. No, unfortunately, the mm-hmm. you know, and ito hindi nangyari ha. The documents <laughs> may nangyari. The document, historical documents of Las Piñas during the CICM as the documents, it was given to the Jesuit archives. Okay. Sa Jesuit oh. archives ang mga do- historical documents, no? You know? But what we have here are only copies, no? So mm-hmm. I'm telling you Diego Serra and Saint Ezequiel did not meet because Diego Serra died in the 1830s while Ezequiel Moreno arrived on the Philippines in 1870. And in fact, mm-hmm. this year, we are celebrating the 150th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood on mm-hmm. June 2, 1871 in the, at the Manila, in Manila no? by Melito Martinez. So they didn't, however, there are reports of our recollect parish priests in Las mm-hmm. Piñas about the repairs done to the church and to the convent. Mm-hmm. Onto the convento ng pare. We have mm-hmm. reports on that. No? Including some inventories. No? Okay. okay. So that's it that we have for now about Las Piñas. Okay. So Charles, no, at least you have a lead. Uh, hindi sila nag Tell Charles, I'm a kilatan. The kilatan uh-huh. sa native of Las Piñas. Andun ko pa sa barangay, ano kami. Doon sa likod lang kami ng simbahan, bahay ng tatay ko. Oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> So, no, hindi nakilatan. siya magkakabit talaga, nakilatan. Oo, oh, oh, bata pa ako, yung lola ko, pinapasyal ko sa simbahan noon, 1969. Okay. <laughs> okay, very last question. Ito naman from Ilo, Ilo Father. Good afternoon, mm-hmm. Father and Sir Eric. Hello. Okay, Omar Gelpi here from Gimbal. Oh, Gimbal. Ay, yes, yes. oo. Oh, oh. mm-hmm. Father, do you confirm for the record that Bishop Andres Malo Ferrero OAR, the last Spanish bishop of Haro, mm-hmm. is indeed the last Spanish OAR bishop in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's the last, no? Because he, but he, he when he when he was, uh, he could not even enter Iloilo in Haro, <laughs> no? And there's there's a diary. He was he was broken hearted because the Agripayans block okay. uh, block him, no? From ah. taking over the the cathedral no i think he was the last no um there were two before leandro arue and the last okay. one is andres ferrero okay? okay andres ferrero was the last spanish bishop before the american bishop took over no okay mm. okay so i think can we give uh father emil a big round of applause no kasi Napakalaki ng ambag. No? This is a very valuable afternoon for everyone who are planning to write something about their local parish stories or who are planning to put up their own uh, church archives. No? So, siguro, I would like to request si Father Emil. Father, can you flash again on screen your contact numbers? Okay. No? Uh-uh. Can we flash again? So yeah. that they will be able to okay again i will uh father please give us uh can you read for us uh this is the address <clears throat> this is the address no my name archive bulwagang recoletos number mm-hmm. 81 along the street miranila homes congressional avenue extension Quezon, barangay kulyat 1107 Quezon city ncr Telephone number 028 or 62 and the email address at chiborecoleto1994 at gmail.com or Emilio, I have another one, excuse me. Okay, it's here, yes. the last. Uh-uh. The last. last, you flashed it earlier. Okay. 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 Emilio Quilatan. Wow, okay, the last, the last. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Because okay. that will be very... Uh, handy for those who have yes. raised so, uh, request for us Emilio Quilatan 7781 at gmail.com or mm. Archibo Recoleto 1994 at gmail.com okay these are the 
two emails that I maintain you know, for contacts. And this is the telephone number, 8951-2861 or 62 for appointments. Or if you want to talk about something, no, important, I can be available. It will uh, pass to the information mm -hmm. said you want to talk to me. Ipapasa ko ng information sa aking archives or sa aking uh, study room. Okay. Okay. So, with that, again, thank you very much to Father Emil. This was a very fun and lively discussion. And uh, siguro hindi, hindi nila na-imagine na si Father Emil, uh, you have your light moments also, no? Kasi uh, tingin nila yung mga archivists laging seryoso. So, so much learning. Kabing, so much pag naging seryoso kami, magiging parchment ang mukha namin. Balikatin <laughs> Okay. Acid free. Acid free. Sana acid free. Acid free. Acid free. Acidic nga eh. Rice paper acidic. <laughs> okay. Yan ang mga code dyan sa ating archives. And I hope all of you will continue to um, follow us again next Monday for our continuing uh, writing your church story webinar series online. No? So... Can we have, uh, we may ask uh, Father to stop sharing now. Stop sharing your slides. So, ayan, they're so happy because it was a very humorous afternoon. So, again, just to remind you, again, I'll walk you through with our forthcoming schedule uh, for July 2021. Our next speaker will be, of course, Monday again. That's on the 5th of July, 3 to 4.30 p.m. This, our speaker will be Professor Regalado Trota Jose, no? our archivist in the Archivo de la Universidad de Santo Tomas, the Dominican UST archives. Then July 12, 2021, the Jesuit archives. Wow, we will have Father René Javeliana no, with us. Nako, ang daming itatanong dito, yung mga fortifications. <laughs> Kung ano-ano na lang. July 19, 2021, we will also have a speaker from the Salesian Archives. We are very lucky also to be joined by Father Nesti M. Pelido, SDB. Also, 3 p.m. to 4.30. No? So that will be our July schedule. So please make sure that you have blocked this off in your calendars. Sige po, maraming salamat. So, we would like to amplify in behalf of the CBCP, Episcopal Commission for the Cultural Heritage of the Church, the Church Historian Association of the Philippines in the UST CCC PET and the UST Archivo de la University of Santo Tomas. Thank you very much, Father Emil, no, of the Archivo Recoleto. So, maybe we can close this session with this prayer the Oratio Emperor. Bev, wala pang kwan. Walang sound. Ay. That has disturbed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by our guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died.
Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Dear the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Again, maraming salamat po sa lahat po ng sumubaybay, lalo lalo kay Father Emil. So we hope to see all of you again next Monday. With this, good afternoon and have a blessed week. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Father Emil.